Welcome to the Foolish Insights. We have received tremendous response from our previous blog, Prevention is Better Than Cure, and we have been flooded with questions and comments. Many of you told us that they eat healthy, according to either the USDA Food Pyramid or to the more current USDA My Plate recommendations. Since the Food Pyramid is seen as the authoritative source for nutritional information, it has been propagated by the media, teachers, physicians, and nutritionists all over the country. But do you know where the Food Pyramid actually came from? The USDA Food Pyramid began in the late 1800s by Wilbur Olin Atwater. Wow, what a mouthful. A PhD in agricultural chemistry, Atwater was tasked and funded by the government to build a respiration calorimeter for studying human metabolism. Isn't that cool? He determined that the calorie was a means of measuring the efficiency of a diet and that different foods produce different amounts of energy. Makes sense, right? His research led to the first published USDA Farmer's Bulletin, which is essentially nowadays the father to the food pyramid. He recommended that for best human metabolism, we should eat more protein, legumes, and whole vegetables, and limit the intake of fat, sugar, and starchy carbohydrates. Now, where did we hear that before? Anyways, however, over the years, the USDA Nutritional Guide evolved and ignored the findings of Dr. Atwater and eventually became the food pyramid we now know in, since the 1990s. As you can see, both the pyramid and even the latest My Place suggestions that we eat a large portion of the diet consisting mainly of high carbohydrate grains and engineered vegetable products such as bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. These are highly processed foods that have little or no nutritional value. My opinion on the food pyramid and my plate, well, I think it is more catered to the food manufacturing industry and it's essentially a marketing tool for the food processing industry. But hey, that's my opinion. The pyramid should be there to promote better health, right? But since its introduction in the 1990s, degenerative diseases such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's diseases are continuing to grow at an alarming rate. Is it really a coincidence? Well, that's up for you to decide. So, why do we say you are what you eat and it's not a good thing? We look at all aspects of your lives to help you achieve whole life success. However, whole life success is meaningless if you are not healthy, right? Leading long lives filled with pain and suffering is miserable and certainly not successful by our definition. As a certified nutrition coach, I have analyzed the diets of clients and friends over the last four years. And it doesn't matter the age, the ethnicities, or the sex, almost all of them fall short of what your bodies and cells need for optimal nutrition to fight oxidative stress and to ward off degenerative diseases. Most of them eat enough to meet RDA requirements, but only a select few eat close to what they need for optimal nutrition. So what about RDAs? According to the American Medical Association, ALMA, recommend daily allowances, RDAs, do little to prevent against chronic degenerative diseases. What? They were introduced in the 1930s with minor changes over the years for the purpose of reducing scurvy, rickets, and pellagra. They do an awesome job taking care of these elements. After all, when is the last time you heard of anyone having scurvy? In 2002, JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, reversed a long-standing anti-vitamin stance by publishing two scientific review articles recommending multivitamin supplements for all adults. So you ask, what's the difference between RDA and optimal nutrition? Here is a list comparing some of the more common vitamins and minerals with the current RDA versus optimal nutrition levels. Vitamin A, current RDA is 5,000 international units. Optimal nutrition is 15,000 international units. That's 300% over RDA. Vitamin C, 59.9 milligrams. Optimal nutrition, 1,300 milligrams. That's 2,170% over RDA. Vitamin E, 30 international units for current RDA. 450 for optimal nutrition. 
1500% RDA. B1 is 1.5 milligrams, optimal is 27 milligrams, 1800% RDA. B6 is 2 milligrams, optimal is 27 milligrams, that's 1350% over RDA. And selenium is 70 micrograms, optimal is 200 micrograms, that's 285% RDA. Hmm, let's go over a few diets that most of the clients we studied eat. First of all, we are in the Bay Area and we have a lot of IT professionals. They tend to study a little bit more uh, what's good for diets and they tend to try to eat more healthy. For breakfast, they may go with a uh, cashew golden cereal, drink a glass of milk and start off with, of course, a soy latte, right? For lunch, they may have a turkey and cheese sandwich, a glass of orange juice, and snack on a banana. For dinner, you know, we all enjoy a nice dinner. They'll have perhaps a dinner roll. You know, most places serve awesome bread to start off. They eat maybe a sirloin steak with a nice vegetable salad. And of course, they need to have dessert, which would be an ice cream. For this diet, Vitamin A comes in at 4,876 international units. Vitamin C comes at 197 milligrams. Vitamin E at 4.3 international units. Vitamin B1 at 1.1 milligram. Vitamin B6 at 4.9 milligram. And selenium rounds up at 163 micrograms. Next, a lot of people eat the standard American diet, which is, sadly to say, the sad diet. For breakfast, they may eat a sausage and egg muffin. And of course, they all like perhaps maybe a uh, black coffee to start off for the day, right? And then for lunch, a lot of them will eat maybe a um, bacon double cheeseburger along with a side order of large fries and a soda, right? You know, it's what everyone eats for lunch. Everyone's in a rush, right? And for dinner, they may drop by KFC and grab some fried chicken, put on a side of mashed potatoes, make sure they get some salad in there so they order some coleslaw, and finish it off with a soda once again. For vitamin A, you'll see it only comes up to 1,707 international units. Vitamin C comes up to 18.4 milligrams. Vitamin E is 3.1 international units. Vitamin B1 is one milligram. Vitamin B6 is 1.6 milligrams. And selenium comes in at 141 micrograms. Now, next we come to the Chinese diet. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of grief because I'm Chinese and uh, this is some of the stuff that we eat too. So for breakfast, we always start off with a tea and um, typically Chinese people like to eat congee with a side order of uh, chow mein, right? You know, uh, a lot of us start with that. And then for lunch, we'll go, you know, tea once again, and we may order a dish with beef and uh, Chinese broccoli with some rice. And for dinner, um, once again, you know, we all like drinking tea. Uh, we always eat rice, can't have dinner without rice, right? And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe we'll splurge a little bit. We'll have a, a dish with uh, fish, Chinese broccoli, and maybe, you know, for dessert, we'll have some grapes. So for vitamin A, you'll see that it comes up to 3,339 3, international units. For vitamin C, 66 milligrams. For vitamin E, 4.4 .4 international units. Vitamin B1, 1.2 milligrams. Vitamin B6, 2.4 milligrams, and selenium, 207 micrograms. Now, the last diet is typically what I see when people tell them this is their coach recommended diet. So for breakfast, they may start off with a super shake. Um, super shakes are typically made with two scoops of uh, protein powder, you know, some berries, some spinach, some crushed chia seeds or hemp seeds with some almond milk perhaps. For lunch, we'll all like to have uh, a soy latte, right? You know, we need a coffee, you know, to perk up the day. 
they may have two slices of organic wheat bread and have a grilled chicken salad with some avocado and some side berries, right? You know, keep it nice and healthy. And for dinner, um, you know, we don't want any more calories, so we probably wanted to drink some water or tea. Then we'll, we'll get a nice grilled salmon with spinach and quinoa and maybe some side order of oranges as a dessert, right? So with this coach diet, which is an awesome diet, you know, we, we try to eat like that, um, you'll get vitamin A of 14,500 14, international units, vitamin C of 274 milligrams, vitamin E of 41 international units, vitamin B1 of 1.6 milligrams, vitamin B6 of 1.2 milligrams, and selenium of 90 micrograms. As you can see, all four diets varies in what they provide with the standard American diet, the SAD diet being the worst. I guess that's why we call it the sad diet, right? Surprisingly, the typical Chinese diet doesn't fare that much better. The IT professional is not bad because they do research and try to eat the right things. But even with the coach diet, you can really see that they easily reach or exceed RDE levels for proper nutrition, but in most cases, it still falls short of optimal levels. That's why we recommend nutritional supplementation to complement the foods you eat to reach optimal levels. Now, after you ate all this food, your body needs to break it down so you can absorb the nutrients, right? Did you know that your body has digestive enzymes that help break down your foods before they can get to your intestines for digestion? It starts in your mouth when you chew your food, releasing salivary amylase, then onto the stomach where the food is further broken down to a semi-fluid mass called chyme with acids, pepsin, and other enzymes, including gastric amylase. After about an hour or so, it passes down to the small intestines where the pancreas releases pancreatic enzymes to further break down the chyme to amino acids, fatty acids, and the simple sugars that your body can use. But did you know the number of digestive enzymes in your body declines with age? That is why when you are younger, you can eat whatever you wanted, and it seems that you never gain any weight, right? That's why as we age, it would be beneficial to add some digestive enzymes to break down the foods that we eat. Now that the food has broken down into your gut, it comes down to the bacteria in your gut to determine how it will be absorbed in your body. Your gut has what is labeled as good and bad bacteria. If you have a lot of good bacteria, your body will absorb what you eat. However, if your body has more bad bacteria, it will make you store food as abdominal fat and in some cases crave more of the bad foods such as sugar and processed foods for flour. You can get more good bacteria by eating probiotics. They come in many forms, mostly fermented. Some popular sources of probiotics are kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, yogurt, miso soup, kumbacha, raw cheeses, not pasteurized of course, and apple cider vinegar. So if you're not getting your probiotics from any of these foods above, you most likely have more bad bacteria than good bacteria in your body which can really affect your body in so many ways. By adding more probiotic foods into your diet, you can see all the following health benefits. You can get a stronger immune system. You can improve your digestion. You can get more increased energy from production of vitamin B12. You'll be, have better breath, who, everyone's better breath because probiotics destroy candida. You have, you have healthier skin and you have reduced cold and flu and of course you will experience weight loss now isn't that cool weight loss right everyone wants weight loss so let me ask you this are you eating healthy enough to supply your body with optimal nutrition and more importantly are you supplementing with digestive enzymes and probiotics so your body can break down the foods you eat so you can absorb all the nutrients. Well, I'll see you next time. Until then, love what you live and live what you love.